y'all and happy Saturday. We are here for week 13 and we're going to continue a bit more in the elements of design. So week 13, we're dealing with proportion, dominance, and variety as elements of design. Now these probably are not talked about as much as things like harmony, color, balance, things like that, but they are equally as important. So as we explore collage techniques, because we'll be collaging, um, and just having fun time in our journaling, I'd be a little bit miss, amiss, and in some ways maybe even leading you astray if I didn't share with you these various elements of art and design. And as I said, they're not talked about a lot. Um, and I think maybe people who do them well, maybe just do them instinctively, or else you're teaching them in more of a formal style course. But just to kind of have these type of conversations about that when we're doing collage, jelly printing, things like that, they're not talked about a lot. But really they make a big difference. And you'll see in the work that we're going to be doing on our, on our tables coming up how impactful they really can be. So proportion, dominance, and variety make the difference in the work of an artist who catches your eye and one who doesn't. I know that a lot of this is natural and instinctive in your own work at this point. I also would bet that there are several of these elements that you have never thought about or at least have been unsure about how to use and how to have them appear in your work. So I encourage you to think about these elements this week. So if we think about somebody like an artist who really just caught, captures your eye, captures your heart when you look at her work, think of O'Keeffe, Georgia O'Keeffe. The huge flowers. And she was quoted when asked why did she draw the flowers so big. She said because she felt that with them being small, people just didn't pay attention to them. And she felt that there was so much um, beauty in all the various types of flowers that if she painted them large, you, she would you'd be compelled to look at them. So now that's an, an example of proportion that creates a dominance. Okay, so that's she's a great example for this. There really are no rights or wrongs, just a strong connection and understanding to your art and exploring what works and what doesn't. So this is an opportunity this week for us to explore what will work in terms of scale, proportion, variety, and what just doesn't. And when to stop. When is too much variety too much? <laughs> okay. And when are you at that happy point? Of the amount of variety. So this is really for you just to explore, just try different things. Um, the collaging that we're going to do coming up is going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to probably push a lot of the ways maybe that you've thought about size and scale in your journal up to this point. So, you know, you can also go back and look at work that, that you have done that hasn't worked. And then, like I've said before, look at this stuff and then kind of apply some of these ideas to it and see, well, if I change the scale, if I made a little bit more variety in it, if I change the weight of some of the colors in this, would that help it? You know, so it's, it's, it's always nice to go back and look at stuff that didn't work and see maybe if you can apply some new thinking to it and see how you maybe you can get it to work. Um, so let's see. Okay, so first we will look at proportion. Proportion is the comparison of dimensions or distribution of forms. It is the relationship in scale between one element and another or between a whole object and one of its parts. Differing proportions within a composition can relate to different kinds of balance of symmetry and can help establish visual weight and depth. So let's think right off. If you're talking about how can you have these varying scales within the same object? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind, I don't know why, but the Peanuts character, because they always all have big heads <laughs> and these little teeny bodies, <laughs> you know? Well, that was the style that um, the cartoonists created, right? for these Peanuts characters. And so they all had the really large heads and the smaller bodies and rounded type of heads with the little teeny sprigs of hair. So where in some cases you put, you know, like you think oh, my head has a lot of hair. Well, in the case of those characters, they always only seem to have three or four pieces, you know? Um, so that's an example of shifting the weight and the shape and the size and the proportion within that same object to create 
a particular style. So that, that would be an example there. So now let's look at dominance and emphasis. So the principle of visual organization suggests that certain elements should assume more importance than others in the same composition. It contributes to organic unity by emphasizing the fact that there is one main feature and that other elements are subordinate to it. Um, so you want to pay attention to both scale and value of the objects that recede and advance. So it's like when you're doing a um, a landscape. Well, clearly the mountains are going to be colored and shaded in size so that they look like they're far back. And the tree that's in the front is going to seem so much larger in the composition than the mountains to, you know, to suggest that it's forward, right? Well, think about if you made the mountains really big in the background because mountains are really big and the tree a smaller scale because trees really are not as tall as mountains then you know you could play with that right and that may be an illustration style it may be a cartoon style right because you've changed the the obvious proportions if you're trying to create more of a realistic scale and you flip them and see what happens so you can play around with um, dominance and emphasis that way and then lastly we'll talk about variety. And so variety is the component to unity and harmony and is needed to create visual impact. You got to have variety, right? So it's like, you know, when you decorate your homes or something, you know, you got to have a little 10% color designers always talk about. So you may have a particular scheme of, let's just say, um, a beautiful cream and a deep chocolate brown. And that's, you know, the components that you have in your home just a neutral organic pattern palette well that's kind of boring unless you take a 10 percent color so maybe it might be a beautiful rusty orange or maybe it's a a wonderful indigo blue you know what i mean but you got to put some pop of something in there so that those other colors sing and so that's an idea of variety so without unity and harmony, an image is chaotic and unreadable. And without variety, it's dull and uninteresting. So in the example of, you know, um, interior design. Good design is achieved through the balance of unity and variety. The elements need to be alike enough so that we perceive them as belonging together, but different enough to be interesting. So we'll move forward in our um, work this week on the table and I'm going to be using a couple of things. I'll be using these printables, my October printables that have like that it's loaded with a lot of these vintage images of Asian printing. Um, and so I'll have the link for these below. I think a ton of you already have these. I'm sure you probably already have these right there on your desk or something similar. If you have other images that you would relate to, and maybe it's not necessarily this um, text, that's good too. You'll see how I'm going to be using it, but that I'm using that. So for those of you who want to know, I'll have the link for that below. And then also I've taken some of my botanicals and I've, increase the scale. So these are the two botanicals I'll be using in um, my work, but you're going to see the scale is quite different from these two. So I'm showing you these, but when you see them, I've blown them up in a way that it, it changes the emphasis from these prints. I'm also going to have a link for a set of free printables that you guys can download. So it'll be the two images that I'm going to be using in the video. Cause I, you know, maybe you guys want to play around with those images yourselves and see how you would work with them and, and, you know, come up with a, a different way of using them than I did. And if you guys do, and you're over there in our clarity, um, through color Facebook group, please post them up over there. I would love to see what you do with the printables. Um, and if you haven't joined and you want to be a part of this, of the, this free group, it's private, but you know, um, it's free. It's Facebook. The link for my group is below in the description as well. Um, Clarity through color. And if you guys are on Instagram, I'm on there as rare birds. Um, you can do hashtag 52 week challenge. 
Um, and I'll find you guys there or, or link me to them and I'll link them onto my story so we all can see them. But I would like to see what you guys do with them. So the printables are going to be six of them. They're going to be these two, but blown up. The blown up, not this version of them. There are a couple of cactuses. I spent a lot of time in the desert and I'm always feeling photographing um, desert life and so I just love the cacti I've, I've blown them up and colored them but I really could see some of the printables and the florals on these backgrounds as well so I'll be working with some of the cactus backgrounds throughout my journal this week so there's these two sheets will be there and they're fun there's going to be this one. like I could really see working with these pink flowers on this cactus background some kind of way but anyway so this will be in there and then these blue ones will be in there so you're going to have six sheets of some of the floral and fauna that I just thought it'd be fun you might want to take the challenge and play with these so the link will be there you guys have already many of you gone in there and have downloaded stuff before so you'll just, it'll just be easy this time because you can just go in and follow the link and it'll take you there the nice thing I like about when I put all of my printables over there in Teachable in my studio school, is that when you go in, you can only download the ones you like. You don't have to always download the whole pack. Like, you know, when you get things off of Etsy, you gotta download the whole thing, you gotta remember the link. I lose them. <laughs> like, I really lose them. I, so anyhow, with mine, it's just, as long as you can always log into the school, you'll have access to everything that's there. Um, and you can just go in and download the sheets that you want to just so keep that in mind too You don't have to feel like you have to print them all if there are some that don't interest you Alrighty, I think that's everything so we're down onto the table now and let's have a little bit of fun All right, see there I'm to show you the ones I'm gonna work with is this one I did a number of them, but and this one so what I did was you know, I took a the, this basic piece of this entire botanical and really just blew the scale up so I wanted it so much bigger than the original so I want to work with this and the same thing with this right here I, I don't know I really just like the color of this red with this sort of indigo blue black um, and so I just really made it larger so that I could just focus in on this area. But I wanted to show you what the size of the originals look like so you could get an idea of what I'm doing here, like how I'm just pushing things larger. And for those of you who have purchased and are using my printables, you'll notice the same thing with those. I make, I really push the scale of a lot of the things that I use larger just to really just create a different kind of balance and proportion and just make things look a little more interesting than I think they do in the normal size of those things that I've collected. So I wanted to show you those and put these to the side. I did a number of them. So just to kind of flip through so you can kind of see what I was doing there. And some of these, I have a few. Now these are um, pictures of cactus that I take in the desert. This is one that's a skeleton at this point. And then I just push the colors. Um, but so, you know, you can kind of play with this and then just bits and pieces of them and then working them back in to collage, but just changing the scale of it. So I'll have a few of these. I just kind of did a lot of them just to kind of flush the ideas out for myself. But I'll have a link for some um, free downloadables of the ones that I'm using here. Um, just so if you guys, and there'll be a couple others in there, maybe about four or so, I'll put, um, and you guys can maybe play with the same thing I'm playing with if you'd like to. Uh, I'm also going to be using October printables. So many of you already have these. That they're, they're the entire Asian pack where it's all Asian scripting from my collection. So um, I'll be using that just so you'll know which, which pack this is from. And I'll have the link below the video if you want to grab them if you haven't gotten them. But you can see here, this is the original document. And this right here is the one that I blew up that's in the Asian printables. And then I turned it upside down. So I kind of changed the direction. Oh, this is the right way up. This is fine. But And I just made it so much larger for the printable. And I just liked 
when I do that to me it just makes you can see it just changes it it makes it more prominent you it's more noticeable just to get an idea so you can see what the original look like against this one like I said that's in the printable pack so let's get going and then I'm gonna use some of the I think I'm gonna use some of the tissue um, that we did from the jelly printing so we're just using a lot of things over and over again and then I have some other bits and bobs of translucent papers and stuff on onion skin and what have you um, that I think I'm going to collage with so we're just going to kind of do some collaging and honestly we're going to see how this goes so I'm going to start with these are the other pages that I did after ours from last week. So, in the keeping in the tradition of collage, let's just get started. So, I I do want this to. I'm going to measure it out on. Just kind of get it going like this. Measure it out so that I can. I'm going to put the whole piece down. Is what I'm thinking. And then I'll do some collaging on top of it. Just, I don't know. We'll see what, see what I end up with. And it's just for the fun of it. It's just designed, you know, like we're in our journals. We're playing. And, um, you know, the whole idea is to learn at the same time something new about the way we can create or work with our compositions. What is wrong with the way I'm holding my um hmm. so I'm gonna put this whole sheet down so let's just see kind of want it I want to get some of this I want it to sort of be like this so what I do is I'm just gonna kind of set it up on here and just Kind of score it a bit so that I can get my bone folder here so I'll know where I want to tear it okay okay so that's one way to kind of figure a page out Just kind of lay it down on your book and then just fold it down and you can pretty much see where where we want everything to be okay so how is everybody's week trust everything is going well of course we keep all these pieces because those are all good for um other collaging so let's put this down so we really just kind of grabbed a bit of that composition and uh, look how neat it looks it already just has a you could do this with your jelly prints just grab some of your old jelly prints or thing or even none of the old ones you really like and maybe as a section of it that you really like you know try putting it on your copier and blow it up to a scale that you know maybe changes it you know it you know it looks interesting but you've changed the scale enough that it's also looking different um so yeah you can do it with jelly and you know it's also it's good to do with things that you feel didn't work <laughs> you know I'm going to put this down like this. You know, we have enough stuff that we feel just didn't work or or like maybe uh, it happens all the time too with jelly prints where you might hear my puppy out there. We have it's our it's our youngest one and he's uh playing around. He's like 4 months now almost and he kind of squeals when he plays. So, I apologize. But it's how it is <laughs> um but anyway what was I saying <laughs> oh yeah you know how, like sometimes you do a jelly print and like 
there's parts of it you really love and then there's other parts that are like a little funky or didn't print as well as you'd hoped for and it's just like really annoying take that section and blow it up take the section that you really like and photocopy it blow it up you know and uh, see you know what I want to get some on here too because sometimes I find that uh, if I put it in two places it's a little better than just in the one why this is not filling just get this I don't know why it's not filling that sticky it's odd <clears throat> Just get it around those edges. Okay, so make sure I put it down proper. It's sticking all right, it is. Get it right here to the edge. Okay, ready. Okay. So we got that down. Let me get my credit card because that really does help to get a good seal. So yeah, just kind of, you know, I do that a lot with my work. I'll play with the scale of things. I'll photocopy them and blow them up just sort of see what else I kind of want to do with them so now what I think I'm going to do with this one is I also want to get I know I want to work with this real big one and um, I think what I was going to do is take this put this one down okay I don't know I think the scripting with I was kind of like working with okay how would I work with the botanicals and I love um, vintage ephemera and stuff like this so when I go to flea markets, especially when I'm in Europe, I do look for this kind of stuff regularly, but I often will use it back in my work by reproducing it like I'm doing here. Um, cause I'm always trying to push the scale of things so that it fits more with my style of creating. So just kind of think about it like that too, when you're working with your, the various materials think about like how you really do enjoy creating you know and what the scale or what would you use with it so with the botanicals I would definitely use the Asian scripting and I would definitely use my scripting and I do like to use portions of botanicals a lot of times I'll blow them up like I'm doing here um, I'll cut the elements out and sort of, you know, kind of rework them. So this is kind of the way I like to work. Okay. get this Giotto I need to get some more Giotto I think I've got a couple more sticks left I need to go ahead and put an order in for some I've really blown through them boy I had about 24 of them <clears throat> okay so let's put this down here all right
Okay. So that's those are my bases. Okay, so now let's see we're going to go from here. So on this one, I can see putting some scripting. And I do have some things cut out over here. Like I have some shells, some things like that cut over from where I used over here. So I see them sitting to the side. So I may pull these out and work with them. But let's go ahead and... I'm going to fussy cut out this a little bit. Just rough, kind of rough like because, you know... I'm good with some of the background. Okay. Like I said, I'm just kind of Kind of just working a little bit on instincts, like just kind of thinking about what um, what I'd like to see over on top of this. And at the same time, I'm thinking scale too. So I wanted to still kind of think in terms of sort of like the unexpected, you know. Like, what could I put down that would almost kind of, like, answer the, the largeness of this, this flower, this botanical? And at the same time, not be expected. Like, it's not an expected element to put with it. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So. Oh, wow, I like that. Let me just get this little bit out of here. It'd be nice not to see that, right? It'd be nice to sort of see the flower bit underneath. So just think about, you can do this with the, with the, um, I know people probably don't think about fussy, cut, fussing, fussy cutting out script, but you can. <laughs> I do it regularly. So, so any of your Printables that you have, you know, think about doing that with them, too. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, yep, that's good. So now, I'm going to put that there. And while that's sitting there, I'm going to kind of work both of these pages sort of at the same time. I think that I want to block some of this off. <clears throat> so let's do that. Let's grab a bit of this. So we're, you know, we're pushing and pulling the, um, I don't like that edge there like that. So we're going to just kind of push and pull the the um, what you see. So we're thinking about, remember we're dealing with dominance, proportion, and variety. So we have this whole thing down and where that's cool, when we um, kind of do what we're doing here, now we're pushing, you know, this is becoming more dominant. This is going to be pushed back some. And it's also giving us the variety we, we want to have in composition. So, alrighty, so let's get, now this is the tissue paper that we use the, um, we used in our jelly printing session a few videos ago with um, Seth's pearl and uh, trans parent or translucent. Okay. And just kind of put a little extra down. Okay. So we'll put 
this down. Get it right to the edge here. Oops. We don't want that. Come on now. It's tissue paper so thin, but the nice thing about it is once you get a coat of paint on it, it's not as fragile. So of course we're still going to see through it. I wonder why this is. I kind of I didn't measure it. Let me just pull some of that off because we don't want that. Okay. So see, so we can still see it, but we've just pushed it back some, right? So this is looking good. This I'm still going to keep there so I can think about it. And um. Let's go ahead and cut this one out since I have it in my mind that I want to I want to use this. So let's just want to get the flower. I don't know what it, what it's about. Maybe it's the shape. I just like the shape of it. And also maybe I think it's odd. <laughs> I think it's odd looking too <laughs> when it got really large like this. Doesn't look nearly as delicate and as it was when it was smaller. So I did find that interesting though, that the nature of it changed when it got bigger. So I think for right now, I'll hold on to these stamens. I don't know if I'll keep them ultimately, but let's just see. When you blow this botanical up, too, you can see when <clears throat> um, who the painter of it. And whatever, who knows what materials it was being used, because these are like um, 18th century botanicals, but you can see how the, the paint flowed over the lines and <laughs> really outside the lines quite a bit. But you can't really tell it until you get it big, and it adds to the character of it, though. So let me just get this side a little better. I cut the other one pretty close, so. Okay, so. <laughs> Look at that, oh my God, see scale? But it's interesting, I like it. I'm just kind of like envisioning this stuff in my mind's eye when I was kind of dealing with it, but I'm telling you, Okay, so I do want to keep, I think I will keep the stamens, but let's just cut them out. I don't believe in doing all that fussy cutting until I decide if I want them or not. I think they, I don't think they'll look as odd as I was thinking they may look, so we'll see. Okay, so now, okay. So let's put this here. That's down there like that. Let me get my clip so that this stays flat. Okay, so now let's see. What else? See, we're really pushing the collage. <laughs> okay. like the idea of that butterfly. This is Tim Holtz from a while back. Um, I do like the idea of it. Let's just see. 
let's just kind of it's already kind of fussy torn so let's just kind of keep it like that and see what kind of element I um it was white and I this is stained with turmeric Hmm. I don't know that I like it down there. Hmm. I kind of like it without a whole lot of stuff. What do you guys think? I almost feel like Kiss Principle here. Just keeping it simple. But I know I want to add something else. So maybe I'll grab this mark making this paper that I have mark making on and staining so maybe something like this underneath it in that area okay I like that that brings a nice little balance to it let's see what else I can dig around and find these strips are also in the kit and the printables So those are already in there for you. This is coming together easier than what I was thinking because I really don't want to add a lot. Okay, so let's let's put this down. Maybe I should make sure I'm putting stuff down as I go because I do like that. So let's put that down. Maybe these are going to be kind of pretty simplistic collages. I don't know. I feel like I want that to be kind of seated in something. Don't like that. Okay. Hmm. Just go ahead and cut this off. I think these may be coming together more easily than I thought. And I guess, you know, like the scale has a lot to do with it, right? Because these are pretty big and you don't want to okay I like this down there like I feel like I want to do something else but what do I want to do oh maybe maybe try the yellow over here huh since we have yellow and maybe that'll work because it's right at the bottom here kind of offsets this yellow and hopefully that'll just it should just blend in nicely so maybe I'll use that there and nope okay let's put that down I do like this okay let's put this down there yeah, this is Tim Holtz from a few years back. You know those rolls, how he does um, tissue paper rolls with printed stuff on it? Got this some time ago. It was actually on sale. Like, so cheap I couldn't not get it. It was like, a roll of it was like $1.94 or something. It was on sale at Joann's. And so I not, a lot of times I'll stain them and put them in my dye bath. Okay, that's cool because it really does disappear, so I like that. Nope. I mean, I could make it busy, but I feel like it's good, like it is. A 
Okay, so let me go ahead and glue this down. I'm gonna glue this down. Like, I, I, I really think that the fact that we made it so big and the background has some interest to it. You see, you don't want to start overdoing it because then it loses the beauty of it. It's just, it goes back to balance, which we talked about last week. Or was it the week before? <laughs> And now we're dealing with the idea of, okay, so change the scale, you know, have variety, make, you know. Okay. Yep. These colors work nicely, and I really like it with this peach color from... Um, Seth's paints. I think this was that tangerine, the the um, coral. No, this is the peach. Okay, so that's looking good. And I just love the way it's just kind of standing up there, you know. It's kind of like out of context, sort of like um, Salvador Dali or something like that. It's It's floating there, but I think this grounds it. And it just makes you stop and look at it like, okay, that's that's different. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm going to say, okay, that's a different way of looking at a, a flower. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. And I love this large script just, you know, looming here as well on this background. So once again, you know, we could do a whole lot to it, but I don't really feel like it needs it. I love the simplicity of it. Oh, I love that. Where's my thing? Here it is. And that's what we were talking about. Sometimes you need a lot of different things to make it work, and sometimes you don't need a lot. It's just finding the right pieces. And I think that works together nicely, even as a page spread, like these everything's working well okay so the only thing I think I might try to do just for the sake of it being sort of like a botanical kind of concept let's just see if we can find let's see if we can find some tags I like how this tag actually says balance on it <laughs> which is one of our oh my goodness <coughs> I almost dropped the whole thing on the floor how did I do that? Okay, I didn't though, fortunately. It, it all hit into my lap. But it's something cool about this word, this balance, and that's what we're dealing with. So I might put that down here. As a, like a botanical. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see what other ones I'm going to use. They fell on the floor, so. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to do something different. Maybe like that. Okay, let's go ahead and put those down. My allergies, oh boy. I start just like, you know, like you inhale and some pollen just hits your throat the wrong way. Does that happen to you guys? Oh, it's before you know it, you're just like coughing uncontrollably. Okay. Boy. I really thought I was going to struggle with this. Honestly, I did. Can't believe that it came together so easily. Okay. So there we have it. I really, really like this. So that's this one up close. I think this adds, this is nice. That mark making kind of balances off the top there. And here kind of creates this sort of horizon or this sort of field. I like that. 
And then the same thing here. Do you guys see it up close? Well, I am surprised. I thought I was really setting myself up to be embarrassed. <laughs> like I'd be struggling for two hours trying to bring these pages together. But sometimes if you just let yourself just kind of go with your intuition. Honestly, I think that's the best. When you don't know, just jump in and start playing. So I'll have some of these. I'll definitely have the ones I was working with. Because I think it would be cool to see how you guys would work with these prints. Um, so I'll put these up and I'll put a couple of others that I think may be interesting and they'll be in a link so that you guys can go over and download them for free like you did. Um, so many of you guys grabbed the one from last, um, a couple weeks ago with the photography, with the um, slides and, um, I know some, I, I kept, I got a couple of emails. I'm sorry. I like, I have been traveling and so much was going on, but I know a few of you asked me what the app was and it's called slide scan. That's the name of it. It's called, I'll put it right so you can see it. So hopefully guys, you guys are looking at it this week, but it's called slide scan. That's the app. Just go to your app store and put in slide scan and then you can scan your slides. Um, that's a bit of business. I think also I got some we weren't able to find Tracy Fox's labels. I think a couple of people asked about that too. So I'll try to remember to do that this week. I'm sorry. Sometimes I like forget what I promise because I do the videos and then I edit them on another day. And um, so I'm not the best with that, but I apologize. I don't mind you asking me. Um, so I'll try to remember to do the Tracy Fox labels. I'm going to put several of these in for free so you can go over and just download them so you can play with the same things I'm playing with. I'll put the link for the October um, printables with the Asian print in case you guys don't have them. But I know a ton of you already have them. So, um, And what else? I think that's everything. Yep. And then you guys can, you know, see what you come up with. All righty. Well, there we have it. Take care. Have a wonderful week. Remember, we're focusing on the, the elements of design I mean, in terms of proportion, dominance, and variety. And I hope this has been, has given you an idea of what I'm talking about in terms of <clears throat> just pushing the size of things and just creating variety and scale. You know, we have small text, you know, you, you're pushing the size of things back and forth. So everything is not the same size that you're working with that. I see that a lot in, in work that I kind of see, you know, like on Instagram and places like that. It's like people, it's, it's nice work, but everything in the field is almost the same size and some like sometimes the same shape. Like the sizes haven't been pushed enough to just create enough variety. Um, so yeah, those will be there. And I guess that's everything. So if you enjoyed this video, please thumb it up. If it's the first time you stopped on the channel um, and you want to come back and be a part of our community, just make sure you hit the bell and hit all so that you'll get all the notifications. And I guess that's everything. And until next week, I will see you guys. I mean, have fun. Enjoy your time in the studio. And um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this series. So keep on pushing yourself. And I will see you again next week. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.